hunger is back in the UK. Cupboards are empty. The worst thing is the first two weeks that you go hungry because you're so used to eating normally that you wake up and your body's like, right, food, and you're not eating. For the first time since the establishment of the welfare state, large numbers of ordinary people are turning to charity to provide food for themselves and their families. Sometimes people just give you like a dirty look, say, what are you doing here? Look at you, look at yourself, look at the way you dress. You really need that food. I've spent six months in one of Britain's busiest food banks, meeting the people who've arrived at a place of last resort. From what I can see, you would have less than £100 for electricity, gas and, and food per month. You're definitely below the breadline. We just eat one meal a day. I won't eat till about 10 o'clock. So it lasts longer, so you're overnight you wake up and you're not hungry and then you can last the next day. We've got kids and we've got to think about the kids before ourselves. The Hope Centre is one of 11 emergency food distribution centres in Coventry alone. Shall I give yeah. them two packs of bacon? Yeah, that's nice. Run by a Christian charity, food banks provide three days' food to people in financial crisis. There are now nearly 300 around the country, and new ones are opening at the rate of two a week. Chuck these ones in there, that's the tomatoes done. And um, when you've done the cereal, we need the soup, soup, soup. Charlotte is a volunteer at the Hope Centre. You right, Tom? Yeah. There's going to be two. There's going to be two adults, two kids. Cool. Shall I hand you tins? Biggest ones first, yeah. She has been a client here, and is struggling to avoid going hungry. When did you last have three meals a day? Possibly Christmas. Right. So three months ago. Yeah. Obviously, I get the odd day where I'll eat something, but on a whole, just dinner, really. After a while, you learn to just kind of deal with it and pull your energy from somewhere way within. Right. <laughs> so now I'm just, I think I constantly buzz off adrenaline or mm -hmm. something. I don't know what it is, but it's not food. <laughs> Are you Lorne? <laughs> Brought up in care, Charlotte's a full-time student at Sixth Form College and has fallen through a hole in the benefits system. You sign that one for me. Because I'm in full-time education with no children at the age of 21, there's nothing for me, there's nothing. I can't have housing benefit, I can't have income support, job seekers allowance. And what were they saying at the job centre? Because you must have been saying to them, well, I can't eat. Um, telling me that um, they're really, really sorry that they can't do anything. And then it got worse and worse during the conversation mm. to a point that she said, well, the only thing I can suggest is why don't you just have a child and then you'd be able to sign on for your benefits, wouldn't you, if you want to do college. Um, so hang on, so somebody in a benefits agency suggested to you that your solution was to have a child? Child. At the to, age of 21? Yes. At the age of 21, bearing in mind I'm not mature for a 21-year-old. I've been in care, I haven't grown up yet. I ended up coming to the food bank. The first time was awful. You feel so embarrassed. You don't even want to pull the food voucher out. I was worried about walking home with bags saying food bank, because right. I was scared that everyone would know as I walked home that I'd had to go somewhere for food, but they give you just normal bags. So when I walked home, it was all right. Unlike other food banks around the country that only hand out non-perishables, Coventry receives a supply of fresh food donated by a wholesale supermarket chain. Food close to its sell-by date is given to charities rather than thrown away and makes a valuable contribution to the standard food parcels. So is that looking like a decent amount of fresh food today? Today, yeah. A bit more variety than we had in the last couple of weeks. Bananas, we haven't had very much. Weak muscles, tiny arms. This food has to be distributed on the day it arrives. That means Charlotte gets to take home some of the leftovers at the end of the day. So what have you got today? I've got 
bagels, mints, apple pie, vegetable pie, uh, oranges, potato salad and bread. <laughs> Which will last me about four days, easily. Today's last client arrives as the centre is closing. Kelly is a mother of two who's been sent here by social services and has had to walk miles. She tells me she hasn't eaten for two days. How old is he? Six months. So is he on solids yet? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He's uh, greedy. Until the birth of her youngest child, Kelly was a sales manager. She's recently been on statutory maternity benefit but with a 15-year-old son, it hasn't been enough to cover their living expenses. And food has run out. Yeah, so that's pretty desperate, isn't it? Yeah. Baked beans, two vegetables. Yeah, there's bits of everything. Tuna. Jack, come here, babe. Put those in the freezer. Freezer, ice cream. <laughs> and it's not just Kelly who's been going hungry. Has Jack eaten all right the last few days? Or? No, last couple of days he hasn't at all. So what have you eaten today? Have you been eating at school? Uh, has he, he, hasn't he hasn't yet. Because we can't get the free school dinners until the income support's sorted out, which is why I have to come home now to okay. sort dinner out for him straight from school. OK, so is that why you were so desperate today? Yeah. For him. Right. It's been hard. He's been eating, but I wanted, obviously, not enough to what he should be eating or what he would want to eat. Um, it's been constantly trying to figure out how to make what we did have stretch just that bit further, um, just to make enough so he wasn't hungry. But that ran out last night. The last meal was last night. This morning, I rang the job centre. They told me to bring social services who spoke to me and told me to get to them to get a voucher for food bank. Mm. Something that I never thought I'd see myself doing. Mm. I'm always one that gives. I, every time a charity bag comes through, I'll always fill it up. Right. Um, never thought I'd be on the other end of it. Mm. With a low income, Kelly has struggled for years to keep her head above water and has now decided to leave the world of work altogether. Financially, I can't afford to go back into work. Not only have I got to pay the mortgage, the council tax, the food, which is what you have to do anyway, yeah. I've then got to find my childcare where I can stay at home, bring him up myself and have more money in my hand. Right. So essentially now you're going to live a life on benefits for a while. Yeah. Do something that I always said I never wanted to do. Right. The rapid spread of the food bank network is due to the cooperation of the state sector. To get the free food parcels, clients must be referred here by social care agencies who assess their situation. If they're at the point of desperation, a red voucher is issued. So this is good to go. OK. All right, yeah. so you're feeding one adult and two children. OK. In theory, there's a limit of three vouchers per crisis to provide a stopgap. In reality, though, not all crises are short term, though sometimes the rules are broken. Sandra is a married mother of five. Her vouchers are issued by her children's nursery, and she's now relying on the food bank on a weekly basis. So essentially, this has become your kind of regular weekly shopping trip. Isn't yes. It? Sometimes they have uh, like quite a lot to give it to us. It will last, say, about four days, five. Right. I mean, it just depends what they have available at the sure. end of the day. Yeah. She stops at Food Bank on her way home from part-time voluntary work. The picture you have from Food Bank is people, they are poor, they are begging. Seeing myself in that position is quite humiliating. I'll wait to hear. Okay. Yeah, thanks. When I come here, I stay here. 
because sometimes people just give you like a dirty look, say, what are you doing here? Look here, look yourself, look the way you dress. You really need that food. Okay. Uh, so you're thinking people are judging you? Yeah. I didn't have my biscuit, so I just loaded it with chocolate. Yeah, it's okay. Biscuits. If you tap on that door yeah. and grab your meat, we've got you a big pack of meat. Yeah, thank you. Okay. In this stage, I don't want to consider myself to be poor. Yeah, but I'm not far off. Yes. Like this week, I have £50 to live on with the five children. That means I need to choose with the £50 if I'm going to pay electricity, gas, food. Two years ago, we were settled. My husband was working. We bought a 50-inch TV. We bought a Mac. You know, we have a quite a nice house. Sure. And I'm proud. You're going to be good. It was Sandra's refusal to live solely on welfare that caused a catastrophic situation. Her husband left work nearly three years ago to study for a career in youth justice. Sandra decided to take a part-time job in McDonald's, not knowing it would halve her housing benefit. After finding the job, I was quite happy. Right. And when I rang the revenue to say I'm working, is when all the problems started because it's one benefit next year, they just start to stop, stop, stop. Thank you. Of course, my salary every two weeks being 79 pounds, they was expecting me to pay the rest of the rent. But your salary was tiny? Yes. Okay. So what happened? Um, basically, we got in trouble. We, we got behind with the rent. All the four months I was in, um, working for McDonald's, all that months we was behind with the rent. Did you end up in this situation because you chose to work? Was that, was that it? Were you, yeah. you were managing okay before, before you did that with benefits and student loan and so on? Yes. I think if I stay in the benefits, I wouldn't be in so much debt I'm now. Right. Because I decided I had enough, I want to go to work, I want, you know, be able to contribute for the country. And that, I think, I call it was my big mistake. Oh, look at that. <laughs> if the food bank hadn't been there, what would you have done, do you think? I don't know. I don't think we would be here. I would have lost the house, I would have lost myself, because at the end of the day, it's not easy. You see five children crying for food and you don't have how to support them. I can't be crying, I can't be down, I can't be stressing, screaming and shouting, I can't. Because at the end of the day, I don't want my children to have that picture of me. And inside, I'm devastated. Oh, I wish you, lovely. Most of the food given out by the food banks is non-perishable and donated by the general public at supermarket collections. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Gavin Kibble is the director of the whole Coventry network. A typical day at this particular Asda will generate somewhere between half a tonne and three quarters of a tonne of food. Current rate, well, we're getting through just shy of a tonne a week at the moment. So even if we get three quarters of a tonne of food here today, it probably only lasts about a week. We're going to run out of food. Demand has been growing steadily since the Coventry Food Bank started in spring last year. Several mm. times since I've been here, the Hope Centre has run out of food. What a day. There's always enough food in the Coventry network, but not always in the right place at the right time. Are you, um, Craig? Yes, I am. We haven't got enough to feed you today, but there is another location open at this time, which is at the Jesus Centre in Lamb Street. How do we know we're, gonna, we're not going to go down the same thing? Uh, well, I could give them a ring, because you don't. We don't know what the volumes are on any particular day. Hi there. Have you still got food stocks left? Good. We've been decimated. Um, yeah, absolutely wiped out. So I'm going to put them in the car and bring them down. Today, instead of moving food around, clients are having to be moved to another distribution centre. We would hold normally about a quarter of a tonne of stock. It's yeah. just gone in the space of an hour and ten minutes. And I can't put my finger on what it is that's changed out there and why that happens one week and it doesn't happen another. But the point is, it kind of tells you that actually there is a need out there that needs to be met. Come on in. 
I brought the overspill with me so, to feed them. Yeah. That's all I can get in the van. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try not be too long, yeah? OK. In the last year, this slightly ad hoc charitable supply chain has ensured that around 170,000 people throughout the country have received emergency food. Hello, excuse me, I'm very sorry to disturb you from the food bank, just asking for 10 or 20p to help families and children in crisis. Thank you very much. Aha! Your mate just dropped you right in it. 10, 20p, 10p, that's just rude. This is to feed kids and families. Charlotte is fundraising at Coventry City College. Excuse me, before you walk any further, would you like to help Coventry Food Bank just by 10 or 20p? No? Thank you anyway. I get really slightly annoyed. It's like I have to, like, stop myself. I mean, looking around, do you think people are aware of the kind of hardships that some people have? No. I do this all the time. I watch people wherever I am. You can never pick out the ones that are troubled. Right. I reckon if you spotted me in a crowd, you wouldn't know that I, I was struggling. Right. Yeah. I mean, do you feel jealous when you look at other people? Very much so. Look, I'd love to have a Blackberry phone like everyone else has got. <laughs> and, like, new clothes. You know, like, you see all the girls and their makeup and their clothes and... That, that's a little bit upsetting. Sometimes I wish I had somewhere to go back to as well, you know, at night. Yeah. Like, with a family and that. The ones that look healthy and chubby and happy, they've got a family. And so what can you tell from looking at these girls? Like, they're really, really happy. They obviously ain't got anything else to worry about. Probably just worried about what to wear in the morning. <laughs> it's the least of my worries, that is. What do you get up and worry about? I had to get electric on, because the electric meter's bleeping. Or when I'm going to eat. Look at them. I chopped my arm off to have one of them. I chopped my arm off easy. Look how nice they look. Don't you think? Oh, what I would do. Look, and she's got a really nice rug. <laughs> it looks so grotty. Someone's even got their windows boarded up. <laughs> and this is my lovely front door. When we were back at the college, I asked you if I could buy you a sandwich for lunch. Yeah. Explain to me why you said no. Because if I eat at lunch and keep eating, I'll get hungry tomorrow at lunch. But if I skip meals in the day, I can go and just eat at night, you know, just eat my dinner. Right. Do you so know what I mean? You're not eating during the days. Yeah, because it shrinks your belly. So then you get less hungry, it oppresses your appetite. It's amazing how you can sing today. Go and then get your scooter. Darren has just been to Food Bank, having been given a voucher by the job centre. Has been a godsend. They really have helped us out. Recently made redundant from a management position, there's been a delay setting up his benefits. He now finds himself battling an unfamiliar system. I always used to be very, very critical of people that went to job centres. And having experienced it myself now more and more on a daily basis, I sympathise with a lot of them. I really do, and I can see where a lot of their frustration comes from. I really can. I'd made my benefit claim six weeks ago and they lost it and everything had gone completely. They admitted liability. It doesn't do a lot for your self-esteem. It does make you feel that you're not actually a human being, that you're literally just another number. Darren's money has completely run out. But the benefits he's owed should be in his account today. We're going to the cash point to find out. All right, here we go. Shall we have a look? Sure. Are you um, nervous about this? Yeah, incredibly, yeah. Incredibly. And there you have minus £19.22, which means actually everything they said they were going to do, they haven't done. So tomorrow morning I will be back down there. Absolutely. And I am really fed up now. Okay, how much were you supposed to have in there? £387 or thereabouts. Right, and that would have been back paid from the six weeks? Six weeks, okay. yeah. Okay, do you want to get me crying? And at this point then, without food bank, what would you be doing to feed your family? 
probably get in a black sack and running up and down this street that we're in at the moment, throwing things into it. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know where I would turn. I haven't got the foggiest. Darren now has to take the last £10 out of his savings account. Milk and bread. Darren tells me he had a senior managerial job. It seems his sudden fall into poverty could happen to any of us. I have been for a number of years managing a group of recruitment agencies. Uh, I was commuting to Northampton and back every day. And um, I went there one day and the offices were all locked. I didn't know what was going on. Came home and next thing I knew there was a tap on the door. Can we have the car and the uh, laptop back please? Why? Because um, we're not financially viable. I'm afraid we've run before we can walk and we're pulling the plug. The following day, Darren heads to the job centre to make a free call to the benefits agency. On the way, a friend phoned and told him he was unable to lend him some money. Darren tells me this means his youngest son's birthday will have to be cancelled. We've now got to try and explain to a six-year-old child why he's going to wake up on his birthday and he's not going to be, as all the other kids are, ripping open wrapping paper for his birthday. Right. So, I mean, of all the stuff that's going on, I guess that must be the most painful. Absolutely, at the minute, yeah. You wouldn't want to be inside my knotted stomach at the minute. Oh, um, yeah, I'll tell you why I'm calling. Um, you can see my benefit claim on there. Um, we had to get a food voucher last week because you guys had messed up on my claim, which was six weeks ago, actually. I've got a family to look after. We've got no money. We're going to need to get another food parcel. And it's my son's birthday, and he's not actually going to be receiving anything for his birthday, thanks to you. So um, when's the next available appointment, please? Tuesday next week is the first time you can get me in. It's unacceptable. Unacceptable. You know, at the end of the day, I wouldn't want you to live in the situation I'm living in right now. I really wouldn't. I've got kids similar ages to Darren's, and the thought of Ben missing out on a birthday was terrible. So I offered to lend Darren some money for presents. Thank you, bye. The charity behind Food Bank is called the Trussell Trust, a Christian organisation that franchises out the running of food banks to local, mostly evangelical churches. Hey, thank you. See you later, darling. Gavin, the director of the Coventry Network, gave up work as an accountant two years ago to follow a more spiritual road. Tonight, we're on our way to pick up Kelly, the mother of two I'd met earlier. Gavin's invited her to speak at a Christian event. Kelly's going to be interviewed, as far as I'm aware, on stage. Um, what Kelly has to offer is that at the end of the day, we can talk about the process and we can talk about how great it is, yeah. but actually she's never expressed as well as through the life of somebody who has actually benefited from it. They're quite broken. Yeah. Uh, Kelly's an example of this, you know. And then they come along to food bank, cupboards full, you know. And for a, for a short time, there's an answer there. And we like to think that it's a measure of bringing a little bit of heaven into people's lives, you know. If we can give people an experience, um, you know, of, of meeting and knowing the living God, great, you know, that's just fabulous, you know. Hello, you're coming? Yeah. This is a lot of dogs. And you've got the baby? This is your 15-year-old, is it? Yes. Uh-huh. Hello, 15-year-old. Strength will rise. Might need a bit of rhythm. Strength will rise as we wait upon. A bit alien for you, isn't it? Yeah.
This get-together is organised by Christians Against Poverty, part of an evangelical movement to provide social services to the most disadvantaged and to win converts. Thank you so much for coming to join with us to remember the poor this evening. We come together to remember the poor and we're excited about the fact that as individuals who are here this evening, I am sure you guys are already remembering the poor in so many ways. To start with, if you'd like to put your hands together for Gavin Kibble and Kelly, who's going to come and share a story. But we thought it would be really good um, if you actually met a lady who came through the food bank a few weeks ago and you heard from her how she came to be in a place uh, where she needed to be touched by the love of, well, so many Christians. Tell us a little bit about that moment when you realised you needed some outside help and how you went about getting it and what your experience was. Um, I woke up in the morning, I was panicking. My older son was coming home from school expecting a dinner, there wasn't anything at this point. I then had to ring social services um, and they told me about food bank and got me a voucher and got me, got me sorted out. Yeah, you see Kelly's situation is not unusual and it is amazing to see the Church of God rise up in the city of Coventry and demonstrate that God really does love you know, everybody in that city. I don't know if God loves the people of Coventry, but gambling and loan companies certainly do. Within an area of 100 metres in the town centre, there are 10 betting shops and five high-interest money lenders. Charlotte is on her way to one of these. She's still got no income at all, and her boyfriend's benefits have been temporarily suspended. She's had to hock her college laptop for £25 to pay living expenses. To get it back, she has to pay £32.50 within three weeks. She's basically taken a loan with a 480% interest rate. The emergency electric had gone, we were sitting in the dark. If I'd have left it, we wouldn't have had anything to wash in or even, no light, nothing. No heat, no light, no food, nothing. So I had to go and put it in and all my college work is on there. All my pictures, all my baby pictures, the only ones I've got are on there. Right, okay. And then what did you do with the 25 quid? Went and put £10 on my electric, I put £5 on my gas to take it off emergency, and then I went and spent £10 on food, which got me through about a week. And how long would you have had to pay up to get um, it back? Yeah, I have three weeks, but in three weeks, it, I, I know there's no money. I don't know when my next meal is coming from, never mind actual cash in my hand to be able to, £32.50 is a lot of money as well, a lot of money. To me, £32.50 doesn't really feel like that much money. So I've given her the cash to get her laptop back. Yes, please, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Sandra is at the Hope Centre with her husband, Kelvin. There's been a delay reinstating the family's benefits and their debts are mounting. I'm struck by how different Sandra appears from the first time I filmed her. To me, they both look as though they're in real distress. Are you, are you getting your benefits? Are you getting yeah, benefits we're, now? We're we, we started, started working out with the, the housing benefits. We're looking for a job now, me and Calvin. We just had enough. A meeting's been called with the family's social care team and the children's teachers. The first point for discussion is the effect on their eldest son's school life. I don't know whether this is like a, a front that he's putting up, mm. uh, but, you know, he didn't want to let anybody in. Does that make sense? Yes. You know, He's quite embarrassed. Being 13 years old is not easy. Car packed the lunch. I'm sure nobody else noticed because he done a very good job, like bread and butter, that's it. Yeah. You know? And he made sure nobody else could see that, but you could see in his face, you know, it's not nice you sit down with your mates and you have a, like, just bread and butter. We couldn't afford anything else. And he got so happy when he got the free, free school meal. Yeah. Oh, God. He was really delighted. Apart from the struggle for food, the family are still in yeah. serious okay. debt to their landlord. In the last meeting, we were talking about, can you afford to long term for 12 months stay in the property? Have you come to any sort of conclusion of where you want to go and what you want to do? Or? Yeah. 
he basically me and Calva we came in a conclusion we cannot afford pay. Okay. No. And the solution is be homeless. Okay. Yeah, register as a homeless and um, see how he goes. If you made yourself homeless, it may not. They may not offer you a house straight away. They yeah. may offer you a bed and breakfast or something like that. Yeah. Which means you could be in there for a good few months before they find you a place. <laughs> I just go in the state. I just can't take it anymore. I just can't take it anymore. I'm in this situation not because I'm lazy. I went to work and I lost everything for choose to go into work. But sometimes you make, you think you make the right decision, but you're making the wrong decision. I mean, being lazy, it will help my situation. Being working, it doesn't. It's uh, simple as that. Caroline, the younger children's welfare officer, is the person who's been issuing the family's food vouchers. But on Sandra's last visit, she was challenged by Gavin about her repeated use of the service. Caroline, with all the respect, I do appreciate your help, I do. But after the last, last week when we came here, we made decision, no way I want anything to do with the food bank. No way. Because that is not the way to treat people. Three vouchers, to reality, that is enough. It's not. Yeah. In their defence, they're all volunteers and not professional people. Is no excuse because I'm a volunteer where I'm working and I don't get paid, not one penny. But I'm doing my job, I'm stressed, I cry every day. I can't even stand in my legs sometimes when I'm hungry. But I go there and I am professional. I am. I don't treat anyone badly. Something went wrong in terms of Sandra's experience with food bank, didn't it? Um, yes, and I'm still trying to get to the bottom of exactly what that experience was. Just as far as I can gather, coming here is a very difficult thing for yeah. her to do. And that given that, the mere fact that her entitlement was questioned was enough to sort of push her over the edge. Yeah, and that's the same impression that I get. But at the end of the day, we have to avoid abuse. If you're at seven or eight referrals, that's our duty to, yeah. re to challenge it. And it really is unfortunate that somebody's pride, dignity is offended by that particular thing. But I feel I have a duty to everybody who contributes food into the food bank to be sure that we're feeding the right people. <laughs> Darren is on his way to food bank for a second time, a week after he was first here. Gavin knows he's coming and is bending the rules to save Darren the trouble of returning to the job centre for a voucher. Hello, nice Hello. to see you. Oh, it's good to see you. How's nice things? Yeah, well, better for me than for you, I think. Yeah, thank you for that. That's all right. Hello. Tomorrow is Darren's youngest son's birthday. Seven on tomorrow, isn't he? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The birthday cake has been put aside from today's delivery of fresh food. Here's your get, sir. Yeah, thank you. Okay, for your son's birthday. Good day to get food today. Was it? Good day for a slab of chocolate gateau. Need it, there will be tomorrow. You've got the birthday candles to go with it. I have, yeah. Excellent. So Last year's. Last Just add one to it. Know. Don't let him know. Did you grab that rest? I'll bring it across you. Darren's quickly getting familiar with the system. What's that? Yes. Oh. oh okay. And today, he's taking home close to £100 worth of food. Gavin offers to give Darren a lift home with the shopping. Thanks ever so much. For Charlotte, there's been a dramatic change in circumstances. Originally from London, she was moved to Coventry by social services, but they then lost contact with her. She's back in touch now, and because they have a responsibility toward her until she's 24, she's now getting regular hardship payments and can go shopping. I don't get um, none of my veg from here because Foz Hill Road do them all like really cheap, like 10 p and onion and stuff. Okay. Yeah. But she's living on what must be the bare minimum. So how much have you got to spend now? 
Um, well, I've got £20, but meats in a bag, like sausages, I normally get from Iceland because they're just cheap. Sure, OK. Cheerful. OK, <laughs> and that £20 is going to last you how long? A week, right. easily. OK. But them, I could never afford anything like that. £10. So even now you couldn't afford that? No. You couldn't afford a chicken? No. Now you do have money for food. Do you see that you were starving for the last three months? Yeah. That's the way yeah. you saw it, is it? Yeah, that badly as well, like... Mm. I was living off one meal a day, if that. The worst thing is the first two weeks that you go hungry. Because you're so used to eating normally that you wake up and your body's like, right, food, and mm. you're not eating. By the time it gets around to dinner, it sounds really stupid. You're that hungry, you're not hungry. It almost becomes a game. Do you know what I mean? You get wrapped up in this sick little game where you think, if I can stop myself eating for this amount of time, then I'll have this amount of food for the next day. So how much did that lot cost you? It come to... £6.89. That's quite expensive still. I know to other people that don't sound expensive for all the stuff that I got, £6.89. Right. Because I've got to get like toilet roll, shower gel. But they're always left till last, you know, like. Okay, because they're less essential. Yeah. <laughs> I seem to survive on very little knowledge. Like, there's been so many things that I've got confused about that I just don't get because no one's taught me. Sure. Ah! <laughs> she was gorgeous. Ah! <laughs> For somebody who's grown up in care, Charlotte seems to have a determination to better herself, despite never having had a proper family to learn from. Aww. She's lovely. <laughs> That's not beetroot. It is. Beetroot's red. It will be red if you clean the mud off it. Oh, wow, really? I worked out I didn't like avocado from food bank. It's that green thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's Yeah, it. I didn't like that. Charlotte may now be able to buy food, but what she's been through in the last months is just a continuation of what she's endured throughout her life, and things have finally got too much for her. I was passed from foster carer to foster carer with a black bin liner full of my stuff, and told to kind of get on with it. And they say, here's the shower, here's the kitchen, here's your bedroom. Off you go. You don't even want to come out of your bedroom. You don't even want to use a shower. Hmm. I think all of that's catching up on me. I went to the doctor and got tamazepam to sleep, because that's the main thing. I can't sleep, even with the tamazepam, I can't sleep, and it's doing my head in. I'm knackered all the time. I think I'm having a bit of a breakdown. I d Do you? Yeah, I'm not like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm not self-pitying normally either, and I feel really... I sound silly and selfish. I feel really sorry for myself. I think it's because of everything that I've been through the last couple of months, because I've struggled so much. My body and my brain's just come right enough. Like, I think I shut away that much. I think everything has just reared its head at the same time. We have shed loads of blueberry muffins. I have 2,000 blueberry muffins, guys, so do not be afraid to give them away. I'm at Food Bank two weeks later, and Charlotte's boyfriend has phoned Gavin, desperate for some spare food. That's for Charlotte over there. OK, Charlotte. To find out what's gone wrong, I offered to take it round to them. Hello? Ash, hi, it's David. You are right, David. Yeah, I'm sitting outside your block with um, Charlotte's food in my boot. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, I'll run down to you, innit? OK, all right, I'll see you in a sec. OK, see you in a sec, see you in a sec. Charlotte is seriously distressed and doesn't want to do any filming. It's another week before she agrees to talk to me on camera. You weren't in a very good way when I came with the food last week, were you? No, not at all. <laughs> I didn't even want to accept help, to be honest. My appetite had got back to normal and I started feeling a bit healthier, which meant that when we were plunged back into struggling, I was starving hungry again, like ridiculously, had nothing. Yeah. And it's the worst feeling, knowing your belly's rumbling and you can't do anything about it and you feel sick. It's awful. 
And the cupboard has not a lot. Despite the payments from social services, Charlotte's still living below the breadline. So what are you and Ash going to eat tonight? Um, I'm not sure at the moment. I don't think I've got any food. I haven't got any food in the freezer at all. Right. No, that's properly empty. Yep. I don't think I've got anything in there. Oh, no, I have two onions, a bit of jam, tiny, tiny bit of milk, right. and that's it. The cause of her renewed hunger appears to stem from a loan taken out some months ago. When her boyfriend had a part-time job, they borrowed £125 from the money shop, but were unable to repay, and the debt has doubled. Obviously, when he lost his job, disaster struck. We had no money to pay them at all. Mm. But that meant that they try and take money off you every single day until right. you finally get money in your bank. Two benefit monies he's had, all of them have gone. So you, they're given completely free access to your bank account? Literally, they can do what they want, when they want, how they want. They can take as much as they want, whenever they want. <sighs> to other people, I get that you'd think, why do you keep doing it? Why are you doing this? Why, why, why can't you figure out something else? But when you're in this position, you exhaust every other option so that you're left with no choice. You know, like, what do you do? Do you sit with nothing? It don't feel like you live, it feels like you just survive. The money shop have since told me they've frozen the debt. <laughs> Kelly's life seems to be entering a more settled phase. The father of her youngest child is living with them now and she's beginning to get back on her feet. It was only those few days where everything was a mess. We're um, back to normal now. The mortgage, that's the only worry now. With levels of personal debt at an all-time high, many of us live closer to the breadline than we like to think. We're encouraged to spend, not to save. So when things go wrong, it's too easy to be tipped into poverty. Go and lie down. Sess, that means you. Move now. Within a matter of days, a volunteer is delivering another food parcel. Thank you very much. Thanks for moving it up. Yeah. Like Charlotte, Kelly is paying a high price for easy money. Why did he need another food parcel? Um, the money that went in for um, tax credits got mm. taken up. Um, with other bills straight away before it hit the account. And when you say other bills, what does that mean? <laughs> Just some loans. OK. And these would be high interest yeah. loans? Yeah. I didn't know how much they were taking or when they were taking it. I just, every time I went to get my money over the last two weeks, it was all gone. I rang them to tell them I was out of work, could we arrange something, but they still kept taking it. Right. Apparently, that's what the agreement says. Right, so, but they can take it... As much as they wanted, whenever they wanted. OK, even though it leaves you in a position where you can't yeah. buy food. Yeah. What's that on your face? Darren appears to have become a regular at Food Bank. <laughs> Is that OK? And gets his food without the need for a voucher. Yeah, okay. Lovely. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Come on, then. Is that everything, George? He arrives early because lately the fresh food has been running out before the end of the day. I think they knew you were coming and thought, oh, let's give him all the cakes. Your shelves are almost empty, Tony. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, devastated. We haven't been this busy since we started up a year ago, at this time last year. That's all I've got. Gada. That's it. Wow. That's all I've got. Sorry. You won't do No, not today, no, sorry. OK. How do you feel when you run out of food like this? When I run out on a good day and I've, and I've fed everybody, it's great. And then you get days like this when you've, when you've run out of food and, you can't, and there's people out there that need food. It just cut me up right to the gut, you know, because I think this shouldn't be happening. And I feel like we've got to do something more, but I don't know what. Mm.
They're having a party of sorts at the Hope Centre. Hello, how are you doing? Good to see you. Since they opened 18 months ago, they've issued 10,000 food parcels. And today, the Lord Mayor is coming to mark the occasion. I'm Gavin Kibble, I'm the Operations Director. Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming. The symbolic 10,000th client chosen to receive the food parcel is Darren. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is symbolically, because we've gone over 10,000, we are feeding the 10,000th person by Coventry Food Bank since it started 18 months ago. So, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, if you'd like to feed Darren, we're, we'll give, we're not going to force feed you, we're just going to give you some food. I wish I wasn't hungry. <laughs> so do I, but you are, so thank yeah, you very much. Can you give a round of applause? Yeah. Well done. Thank you very much. But I'm beginning to have my doubts about Darren. He's been doing radio interviews today in the run-up to the event, and he's giving a completely different account of the cause of his benefit delay. Do we just sign the bomb? He's behaving with a sense of entitlement I've not seen in any of the other yeah. clients. If you see Gavin, he sends me down, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah. We'll be able to swap that for something. Yeah, that would be much better. Thank you very much. What about that watermelon? Are you doing anything with that? He's now driving a courier van. And despite claiming job seekers' allowance, he's doing delivery jobs, which he's not declaring, so he's committing benefit fraud. I've got work Thursday, Friday, working in Interlink, just doing some multi-drop driving, but it's a couple of days' worth of money that I wouldn't have, you know? Right. Ben, can you come here so I can test you on this? Okay. For your height, please. Okay. On his way to Food Bank on one occasion, he stopped How to buy that? Ben a new scooter. Yeah? And he's the only client I've come across who's stopped on the way home to buy Parma ham from the supermarket. So I'll take it a Parma ham didn't come from the food bank. No. Although I have had nice salami from there before. And today he's telling everyone he's about to start a new managerial job. Got any job interviews lined up? I've got a job starting on the 23rd now, which is really good, yeah. It's um, working for Parcel Force. For? Parcel Force. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. Um, decent money, company yeah. vehicle again, yeah. management role, so back into what I'm used to. Yeah. Uh, and I'm hoping but Parcel Force tell me they've never heard of him. Really nice for us and our family. Yeah. Gavin, though, remains convinced about Darren's need. He's a very genuine guy. Uh, and it was a pleasure to work with him, you know, and um, I'm really pleased with the outcome of that one, you know. It's, yeah. uh, it is a good news story for him. Um, it's a good news story for the food bank as well. Are you? And we have a set of procedures and practices to protect the food bank from abuse. And if we feel, you know, that the need is genuine, um, we don't play to the system, we play to the need that we see. If he'd been really clever, he could potentially have pulled the wool over our eyes. But I really don't think that was Darren um, at all. But it seems that little Darren has told any of us has been true. Milk and bread. The first time I'd filmed him, I'd lent him some money for his son's birthday. A check with the Coventry Registrar reveals that it wasn't Ben's birthday at all. That was two months earlier. The benefit agency tell me Darren was in full-time employment as a courier until the day before he first arrived at Food Bank. And his benefits were paid a week later, meaning there never was a delay at all. Is that all yours, mate? Yeah. It is, yeah. Thank you, you one of them? He's got a... he's a lot of family. Uh, ah, yeah. kids. Kids, kids. Yeah. kids. A serial debtor with a string of county court judgments against him. I think Darren targeted the Food Bank and did very well because the system was easy to manipulate. Thanks ever so much. When I catch up with him, he started a new job. But it's not as a manager for Parcel Force. What's the job you're doing now? It's, it's, um, it's driving, okay. delivering to people. So in, in effect, it's on the opposite side. But to be honest, it's, um, it's going to tide me over until yeah. I'm in a better position to um, put my suit back on again. Looking back over what I filmed with you over the weeks, one of the kind of most emotionally painful things was Ben's birthday. Yeah. Was it actually his birthday that weekend? Yeah. He got his trampoline, it's down his nanny's. If you go and have a look, it's bouncing there. Do you want to go and bounce on it? <laughs> but, <laughs> but it you wasn't know, actually his birthday that weekend, though, was it? What? It wasn't actually Ben's birthday that weekend, was it? 
or a couple of weekends before, but it, it was it was us making it up to him basically. It, it was, but his birthday was way before that. It was, but do you know what it was? It was an it was an emotional factor that we had planned a party. Hang on, Darren, his birthday was in the beginning of May. May, but we we planned a party for Ben. We couldn't afford anything for him at the time, and we basically. Hang on, you couldn't afford anything for him in May. Not really. But no. you were you were in full time employment in May. I was, but we were starting to struggle at the time. Right. According to the benefits agency, yeah. you were a van driver uh, on the 5th of May. I wasn't. Um, and according to them, you'd been on and off the benefit system for some time. Well, I haven't been on and off it for some time, and no. you've got a history of debting and petty offences. I, ha I have, yeah. And I think, I think you'd, you heard about food banks and you targeted them for a bit of free shopping. No, that wasn't the case at And all. you did very well out of it. No, that wasn't the case, Dave. I did get a, a, a fair bit of food, yeah. Yeah, but, you, I mean, you could have a month's worth of shopping out of the food bank, and that's probably worth, what, 500 quid? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. From the stuff they gave me, I couldn't tell you, Dave. I don't know. I don't know, mate. Me, man, you, woman. Here we've got two. Two people. You, one. Who's the other? At the Hope Centre, Gavin is scrutinising people's vouchers. We've got two support workers who've turned up without any form of identification. Yeah, that's fine. OK, I just need to be sure. Yeah. All right. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> you have been accurately described. <laughs> I was struck by the ease with which Darren had abused the system. Um, I actually think we have, for the voluntary sector in the city, a very, very tight level of control. Um, and we need that because we need to honour every single tin that's been denoted to us by the general public, that we have a good idea that that food is going to somebody who actually needs it. OK, somebody like Darren, for example, you gave him vouchers when he needed them. Yes, very specific example of somebody that we got to know very, very well indeed and understood the circumstances too. Um, but do, you think, do you think you were equipped to assess his need properly? We, um, yes, I think so. And do you think you assessed his need properly? Yes. Darren was a con man, Gavin. Serious? Darren was a con man. Nothing he told you was true. He got you into a position where you would give him vouchers on demand and he took you for everything he could. Is this being recorded? This is being recorded, yeah. Then I need to reassess what we're doing. I'm absolutely shocked by that because uh, I... Uh, felt we were a, a good judge of people, so I'm just... <sighs> the stories of everyone I've met are more complex than they first appear. And the system is too easily abused. But food banks have identified and are trying to meet a real social need. And for every opportunist, there are many more in genuine crisis with nowhere else to turn. You're right, Jaden. You can have a Mr. Kipling cake. Yeah. You don't have to be at Food Bank long to meet people like Aaron and Zoe. Aaron's been in and out of low paid work, and the couple are struggling with rent arrears. There we are, mate. Is that nice? Your weekly food budget is how much? About £40, so uh, this is a big help. For a family of four, you need at least £90. So how have you been managing when you've not been going to the food bank? Just not eating. We don't. We just eat one meal a day, whereas the kids get their full breakfast, lunch, dinner and pudding. And I won't eat till about 10 o'clock, so like, it lasts longer. So you're overnight, you wake up and you're not hungry, and then you can last the next day and until night time then. We've got to think about the kids before ourselves. Mm. Then never go about, do you? No. You love your food. Mm. 